Hello, this is Kathy Cassidy and I'm here to read you chapter 31 of Scarlet, which is the second to last chapter in the story. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely a gripping one. And I warn you, um, I'll give you a minute or two to get ready, but you need a tissue maybe for this one. It's kind of emotional, so be prepared and be warned. And I had a couple of things to say before I'm going to actually begin to read the story today. I don't know how many folks here are still listening since since I began reading chapters, not even of, of um, Scarlet, but actually from a book called Love from Lexi. And if you have followed right from the beginning of that, you will know that I began this reading of chapters because a mum called Jinky living in the Philippines had emailed to ask me um, was there any way of, of getting hold of my books during lockdown all the way over there in the Philippines because her daughter was struggling and really really wanted to read more Kathy Cassidy books and um, that's why I started doing the, the readings um, online which has been quite interesting and a bit of a learning curve for me but anyway I had the loveliest email from Jinky with a lot of pictures attached to it showing that um, their lockdown has begun to ease and their bookshops have now opened again. Um, and although children and seniors are still in very strict lockdown, um, Jinky's, uh, sorry, Jinky and her husband were able to get to the bookstore wearing masks and everything and were able to buy um, another Kathy Cassidy book for their daughter and that was the loveliest loveliest kind of story and it kind of just it feels as though the whole thing has kind of come full circle which is great so to Jinky thank you and to her daughter I hope you keep on enjoying Kathy Cassidy books and thank you for the inspiration for this um, very couple more um, quick shout outs they are to Asma, to Francesca and Amy, who I know have faced a very difficult journey during the last, the last year um, and have followed uh, along with the readings. Um, and I just wanted to say, I really, uh, you know, I feel I've made friends with so many of the people who are watching and some of you I knew already and a lot of you I didn't. Um, but well done for coming through what you have and Amy especially I know has has really conquered an awful lot of challenges to come through um, and then I had the most fantastic uh, comment from Helen who is in Australia and Helen wrote on the YouTube channel I watch the video every night from Australia thank you for giving up your time to read this book and also love from Lexi it has been something to look forward to every day during lockdown and I will miss seeing your smiling face. Well guys, I am going to really miss your comments and uh, the camaraderie and banter that's grown up around this. I've, I've loved it. So, But don't panic because we still have two more chapters and here is chapter 31 for you. I dream of Kian and midnight and hazy afternoons by the loch side holding hands beneath the wishing tree, riding along the ridges at sunset. I wake early, but not to a hail of gravel. Kian is gone, just when I needed him most. I dress quickly, grabbing my fluffy rucksack, stuffing in a few bits and pieces. I creep downstairs, past the old squashy sofa where Mum is sleeping, wrapped in one of Claire's patchwork throws. I dip a hand into Claire's scrap bag, fishing out the dressmaking shears. I drop them into my rucksack, then open the door and slip outside. The air is clean and fresh, and the grass is sprinkled with dew. In the hedge beside the gate, a dozen little spider's webs shimmer. I walk down the lane, through the woods, to where the loch is sleeping, beneath the soft blanket of mist. I sit down on a rock, empty my rucksack out onto the stones. Three red dresses, Claire's dressmaking shears. I pick up the scissors and chop the skirt of the red velvet party dress away from the waistband. I slice down one seam, snipping the skirt's soft fabric into strips of raggedy scarlet. I do the same with the crinkly silk dress. 
and the rich red cotton with the embroidered hem. Then I gather the pile of rags up in my arms and take them over to the wishing tree. I tie them onto the branches one by one, making wish after wish for my new baby sister until the tree is filled with red rags, fluttering scraps of scarlet and crimson and cerise. Then I sink down onto the grass and rest my back against the tree, looking out at the mist and the loch. The rider comes out of the mist at a canter, slowing as he reaches the tip of the loch, reining in the big black horse, turning him so the pair splash along towards me through the shallows. My heart races. Kian and Midnight stop a few metres in front of me. Midnight scuffs at the grass, snorting and shaking his head. Kian just sits astride him, brown hands knotted into the horse's mane, face half hidden behind a soft fall of dark hair. Where were you? I ask, surprised at the anger in my voice. Where were you yesterday? Kian slides down from Midnight's back and turns to me. You know where I was, he replies. He replies. I had to find my dad, let him know I was okay. But you promised, I fling at him. You lied to me, I needed you and you weren't here. Kian drops down into the long grass beside me, hugging his knees in faded jeans. His tanned arms glint with little golden hairs and the plaited leather bracelets on his wrists drop down over his hands, revealing a sliver of paler skin. Looks like you managed okay, he says carefully. What would you know, I protest. Yesterday was awful. Claire fell and went into labour early and the storm knocked out our phone, so we couldn't ring for help. I looked for you everywhere, but you weren't around. Kian rakes a hand over his face, pushing the hair back. His eyes look shadowed, haunted, like the eyes of the boy in the photograph yesterday. Is she okay now? he asks softly. Claire and the baby? What do you care? I cry, ashamed at how childish that sounds. Everything's messed up. My baby sister is in special care and Claire won't stop crying and Dad looks so lost. Kian lets out, lets out a long, ragged breath. I do care, Scarlett, he says, more than you know. My mum died in Castlebar Hospital this time last year. That stops me. Your mum died, I echo. Kian nods. She had cancer. By the time she found out, it was too far gone to do anything and mum was never one for doctors or hospitals anyway. We came out here, the whole family, my uncles and aunts, all of us. We stayed by the loch, did a bit of casual work for the local farmers, swam in the loch, ate rabbit stew, we partied every night, lit fires, told stories, danced, played music, made the most of last summer, lived it one day at a time. The travellers by the loch, I whisper. Holly and Roz told me about it. Big shiny caravans and horses and dogs, that was you. That was us. Your cottage was just up the lane, so of course Holly would have known we were here. That's why I couldn't risk meeting her at the loch the other week. Things would have got complicated. That's how you knew about my dad that first night at the loch, I whisper. That's how you knew where I lived. That's how. What? What happened? About your mum? Well, we pretended nothing was wrong, Kian says. We pretended right up to the point when we couldn't pretend any more. Then it fell apart. Mum was too ill, in too much pain. My dad couldn't stand it. She begged him not to, but he drove her to Castlebar to the hospital. We moved on, found a council site in town, stayed there a while, while so we could visit her. But Scarlet, she never came home. Kian makes a weird gasping sound and covers his face. I can see his shoulders trembling slightly. I reach out to touch his hair, his face. I'm sorry, Kian, I whisper. I didn't know. He pulls me close and we hold each other gently, cheeks touching, arms wrapped softly around each other, as though we're each holding something very fragile, very special. I want to stay like that forever, feeling Kian's warm breath against my neck, the slight jut of his cheekbone 
against mine, a strand of his black hair blown across my lips by the soft breeze. Then he sniffs and smiles and wipes his eyes on his sleeve and we move apart awkwardly, still holding hands. Kian lets his head fall back against the hazel tree. Dad couldn't face travelling for a while, he tells me. We went to Dublin, parked up on a permanent site. I went to school. It was bad. I didn't fit in and I couldn't get over Mum. I truanted a lot and as soon as the warm weather started, I took midnight and headed out here. I needed to be on my own, think things through. I needed to be here. I guess they've been looking for me ever since. I shut my eyes, guilt-stricken. I told them I'd never seen you, I say, remembering. I sent them away. Kian shrugs. They didn't go far. There's a place we used to like, on the coast to the south, right by the ocean. I rode out yesterday morning and found them there. We did some talking, sorted some stuff out. I think it's going to be okay. I'm glad, I say. I'm sorry I got angry, Kian. I thought I'd never see you again. You were always going to see me again, he grins. I had a promise to keep, didn't I? Neither of us point out that it was a promise to say goodbye. I'm sorry I wasn't here for you yesterday, he says. Do you think she'll be okay? Claire's baby? I think she will, I whisper. I hope so anyway. They're doing all they can to help her. Kian's fingers stroke away tears, play with my hair. I can feel his soft breath on my cheek. Know what, he says. I'm going to miss you. That first day I rode into Killymore looking for supplies. The village was going crazy about some mad English girl who'd marched out of school and made for the hills. When we met up later, right by the wishing tree, it seemed like it was meant to happen. I've, ha I've had the best summer, Scarlet. I thought it was going to be the worst, but you made it into the best, OK? I'll never forget that. It feels like a dream is falling to pieces right in front of me. My eyes are gritty with tears, showing me a world that's blurred and hazy. You're going back to your family, aren't you? I ask. I have to, Scarlet, he says. It's where I belong. I felt like I was on my own for such a long time now, but I'm not. None of us are. Families are never perfect, Scarlet, but you have to hold on to them. They're a part of you. I think of Mum striding through the hospital corridors last night, brisk, efficient, taking charge. I had never been so happy to see anyone in my whole life. Maybe you're right, I tell him. Hey, he laughs, I'm always right, OK? He kisses me then, his lips soft and gentle and salty with tears. And I know he's saying goodbye. We'll meet again, Kian says. I promise. I put a finger to his lips. Shh, I warn him. You are not so good at promises, remember? Ah, uh, you'll see, he says. He takes a braided black bracelet off his wrist and ties it gently around mine, letting the ends dangle. Just don't forget me, that's all. He gets to his feet and just when I think he's going to walk away, he turns and reaches up to the hazel tree, grabbing onto a branch. Any of those wishes for me? He asks. Maybe one or two. He unties one of the scarlet rags and rakes a hand through his untidy hair before using the rag to tie it back. Then he whistles for midnight and takes him by the bridle and the two of them walk away slowly along the silver shore of the loch until they're lost from sight in the mist and the dawn and the blur of my tears. So that was chapter 31 and tomorrow chapter 32 is the very last chapter in the story and I still have um, a few people on YouTube asking if I will either do a live stream or a video where you guys can ask your questions either about this story or about writing in general or about pretty much anything. Um, if you think that you might be interested in that, can you let me know? Um, and I'll maybe leave it a day or so after the end of the story and then do something for you. 
um, yeah, and it will be a shame. I will miss you guys, but I am, I'm definitely going to be here tomorrow to read you the very last instalment of Scarlet. So until then, stay safe, stay smiling and take care. See you soon.